Zach, do tell it. me what's going on, my man. Do it. Well, do it. Let's welcome everybody first to Five's a Crowd. Hello. Hello, Hello everybody. Um, I'm here tonight with my four lovely friends, or as Austin would call us, beautiful. Mm, vivacious. Vivacious. Voluptuous. <laughs> Maybe not with that <laughs> tone. <laughs> we got Cam, Chris, Austin, and Tony. Hello. Um, tonight. Man, that, that sounded so weird because I'm so used to saying it the way that I say it. And so when <laughs> what you, do you say? Well, I say Cam, Chris, Tony, and Zach. But when oh. you had, when you had to throw my name in there, I'm like, that sounds off. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That's because it's you. Oh, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> Present. <laughs> so tonight, I am in charge. Oh no! Large and in charge. Oh, I'm not large. I was going to say, boned. You Fluffy. been losing weight. You look good. Anyway, uh, well, thank you. That makes a guy feel good about himself. <laughs> 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 That's creepy. <laughs> I'm all about making men feel the good about themselves. The compliment you know? would be better if you were gay. Ah. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. I, I identify as gay right now. <laughs> 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 now I feel excellent. That's great. <laughs> um, so tonight's top ten. And this is Zach's turn for his top ten, by the way. Yes, it is my turn. And I am going to steer it in the direction of... Oh, I'm so excited. What is it? Mysteries. Oh! oh mysteries! Mysteries. Okay, get, so like, what kind of mysteries are we talking about? Oh. We're going to go everywhere. Like unsolved mysteries, like paranormal mysteries, all the mysteries. <laughs> mysteries. His top 10 mysteries. mysteries. I like it. So, and this, I want to use this <clears throat> as more of an open forum discussion. Okie dokie. Um, and I also, and some of these topics we've talked about before, some of them we haven't yet. And I think this could lead to further discussions down the road. Okay. Sweet. But I like it. I am going to start off, though, with number 10. Which is the least. Correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. These are there's a countdown. Yes. 10 to 1. We, learned, the to best. One. we learned from my mistakes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I actually numbered mine correctly, you oh. know, and all that stuff. So You want to know what's funny? Have you li- re-listened to that podcast uh-huh. at all? There's 11. <laughs> I'm going to have So not so. only was my numbering off, you threw one in. I threw an extra one in. Bonus round. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> I like it. I, like I was it. doing right the timestamps. I'm like, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1. one. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Zero. Well, mine, there's actually 10 because I, you know. All right. I did, I did better than you when it comes to I'm that. Excited. I know how to count. <laughs> <laughs> so, first one. Has any of you guys ever heard of the London Hammer? <sighs> That, that sounds, sounds like a porn star. <laughs> it sounds like a website I visited. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I am Chris used to go by. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is it a wrestling move? Ooh, oh, I, I have, like it. I have heard of this. Okay, so you are in London, Texas, 1936. Threw you off, didn't it? Yeah. It did. <laughs> Texas! There is a London, Texas. My brain just went <laughs> boom. <laughs> so, 1936 or 1934, according to some accounts. Max Hahn and his wife Emma were on a walk when they noticed a rock with a wood protruding from its core. Hmm. They decided to take the oddity home and later cracked it open with a hammer and a chisel. Ironically, what they found within seemed to be an uh, archaic hammer of sorts. A team of archaeologists checked it out, and as it turns out, the rock encasing the hammer was dated back more than 400 million years. Dang. The hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. Additionally, a section of the handle has begun to, uh, the transformation to coal. Uh, creationists, of course, were all over this. The hammer's head, made of more than 96% iron, is far more pure than anything nature could have achieved without an assist from modern technology. Ding. Wait, how many million? You said 5 million? The 500 million. The itself is 500 million yeah. years old. The rock is 400 million years old. So was the wood fossilized then? Yes, it was already starting to turn into coal. Wait, Parts hold up. How old is Dwayne? 
<laughs> Sorry, I had wow. to. That was a dumb, dumb joke. So is it so, from a civilization, from an asteroid or something? That I was going to say, because it says it's more so, pure. Than and I don't know if we want to, if, if we want to mark the thing. I've got a picture. I will show you guys. If we want to mark it, we can put it up there. So that is what. Yeah, yeah make sure you're grabbing timestamps so yeah. you can put pictures on. So okay. that's what they found. That's what? insane. So that's crazy. Yeah, yeah I was that's gonna say you got it up over. Yeah, nuts. that's what they found. It's legit a hammer with a piece of wood. Like that's crazy. Five hundred million Dude, years old. It's stuff like this that honestly makes me wonder if our civilization once was like massively powerful and technology just unbelievable and got wiped out and we had to start from zero all over again. Which brings me to number nine. No! Yes! No! I didn't even know! <laughs> Atlantis. Yay! Okay. okay. So, Atlantis. Wait, wait, wait. Before we press the number nine, I need to know, is there any speculation on where the hammer's from? No. Just it, that it's, it's five just, million years old. Just five hundred. Just from the early Cretaceous it's, period. It's that's authentic. All. Yes, hundred percent authentic. So you're they literally me just found this rock with a piece of wood sticking out of it. Thor came down from the <laughs> heavens, and that's why they I the mean, dinosaurs that killed the dinosaurs. That do doesn't look exist. like Mjol- Mjolnir, however Mjol- you say that. Mjol- Mjolnir. Mjol- yeah. Mjol- meow meow. Meow meow. Meow meow. That doesn't look like meow meow to me at all. But <laughs> they wouldn't after 500 million years, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, it just looks like Thor's little just, brother's hammer. <laughs> what what amazes me it on it is how hammer. <laughs> is how they said the hammerhead was more than 96 percent iron, which nature could not do that without the assist of modern technology. Yeah, or make a hammer. I mean, <laughs> no, nature can do it. But you see only, some tree over there just beating a rock. <laughs> only sixty percent iron is when nature does it. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Right, so to so think of like alien civilization or something. Yeah, yeah. but then again, like if it was aliens, right? I'm speculating here. If it was aliens from another hammer. like planet, why would they have a hammer? Well, they started out somewhere, yeah. right? I know, but I mean, like, why would there be a hammer? I mean, or maybe they came down to uh, to, or to guide humans to make the tools. My brain went two different directions with this. So there's people who believe in the Big Bang Theory, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where nothing and then all this matter pulled Ooh, together to create a planet. So once if it came from a planet that had been destroyed and that was a piece of it that got brought to this earth. Or if you're a creationist. Um, which you believe which, that God created exactly. our planet from other planets. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or, yeah, Someone he created Earth hammer. and it came from somewhere, right? Yeah. So he created the Earth, but it came from other material. Yes. And when he put it together, so this that could happened be to from a complete other there. planet that was Dang. advanced technology. and So you could look at it both ways and it's plausible, right? I like your thinking. I never thought of that. Ding. 500 million. You just blew my mind. I blew my own mind. (laughs) (laughs) We're out here blowing minds. I can be smart. (laughs) Or you have places like Atlantis. Okay, let's hear it. Who are completely beyond what civilization should be at the time. Mm -hmm. So Atlantis was first described by Greek philosopher Plato more than 2,000 years ago. And according to the timeline accounts, Atlantis existed 11,500 years ago. Okay. So that's that, I guess the hammer couldn't really work out because oh. the hammer's 500 million years. Yeah. Yeah. So um, many believe that the story is a myth created by Plato to illustrate his theories about politics. Others insist, is, insist it is actually based on real historical disaster. Um, according to Plato's account, written around 360 B.C., Atlantis was a major sea power located in the Atlantic, larger than ancient Libya and Asian Minor, modern Turkey nowadays, um, put together and was the way of the other islands. And from these, you might pass to the whole of the opposite continent. So it's basically a, a wayfare for these ships okay. to get from one. Like, basically, I, if, I, if I read it right, it's like in the middle of the Atlantic um, and it's right between like America and England or something like that. Mm, okay. If I, if I read it correctly. <laughs> Anyways, Atlantis in mythology was the domain of Poseidon. Poseidon fell in love with a mortal woman, uh, Cleato, 
she was um, she gave birth to five sets of twin boys, who became the f- five sets of five twin sets boys. Of twin. <laughs> so ten kids. That Ooh. poor soul. <laughs> oh my! How does she walk? <laughs> She doesn't. Oleg. Life finds a way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> She's in a wheelchair. <laughs> a hovering wheelchair. They became the first rulers of Atlantis. The island was divided among the brothers with the eldest, Atlas, first king of the Atlantis, being given control of the central hill and surrounding areas. For generations, the Atlanteans lived simple, virtuous lives, but slowly they began to change. Greed and power began to corrupt them. When Zeus saw the immortality of Atlanteans, he gathered the other gods to determine a suitable punishment. Soon, in one violent surge, it was gone. The island of Atlantis, its people, and its memory were swallowed by the sea. Hmm. So, from everything else that I read up about Atlantis, is it was this virtuous colony. It's an island, 100% island. There was virtuous colony. You have five sets of different things on there. And these people were beyond measure of what um as far as uh, as, as far as like I can't technology remember, technology yeah the rest of the world comparably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah they they had everything bestowed upon them they were and then greed all this stuff came to them and uh what a lot of people believe is there was major earthquakes <laughs> um volcanic eruptures all that stuff and it just basically disintegrated the whole island mm. and it withered away to nothing Dang. have they found uh, like potential evidence of Atlantis, kind of. Yeah, I was gonna say things that looks like it, but they can't. <clears throat> like th- there, are, there are parts of civilizations that are lost underwater, and mm-hmm. they found, and they they just don't fully know what it is. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So people are like, and they even speculate it could be Atlantis. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely talk <laughs> like that. <laughs> they do. They always lay out all these facts, and then they're like, but Ooh. some believe it could be the remnants of the fabled Atlantis. <laughs> That's true. It's a rock. That's pretty <laughs> on. <laughs> it's, it's a cup with, with some dirt in it. dirt in it. <laughs> <laughs> I call it a cup of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do you know what? There is things saying that Atlantis is actually was an alien civilization in the middle of the ocean. So that they could check out, you know, people. <laughs> where, you, <laughs> okay, where well, they could check out, you know, humanity because they're mm-hmm. way ahead of the time, and on that island they could be away from everybody. And they still say there's remnants of the aliens uh-huh. in the Tic Tac and everything right. because yes. it goes into the ocean. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We've talked about it before. We'll talk about it more another time. They're in the oceans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Atlantis not saying. Is, I'm Atlantis saying. is still down there. They're still they're still living in Atlantis. Freaking out, man. Gun, the Gungans. The Gungans. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, cha <laughs> Oh, oh is that a Gunga? Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> <laughs> My wow. God. On side note. Jess and I sat down to start the Star Wars from episode one, oh. and it started out with that Jar Jar Binks. We got 20 minutes, and I'm like, I can't handle this shit. I <laughs> I'm about the same. I tried the same thing with Katie, you gotta and get, I was like, Gosh. Actually, that would have been a really good top 10 for you, is that there was a fan theory yes. that, that Jar Jar was actually a Sith Lord. What? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's actually wild. When you look into it, you're like, oh, dang, this could be legit. And he's pretty much playing dumb the whole time to mess things up. Oh, uh-huh. man. Look into it later. But this All is right. your show. All right. Hey, <laughs> I'll look into it later. All right. Okay. Number eight. You guys ever heard of a lady called Jeannie Safin? Hmm. No. In no. Life, I dream of Jeannie. In a bottle. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> In a lot of ways. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't dwell on that, huh, right now? <laughs> there was just a lot of quotes don't, there. Don't get just... in trouble. Don't get in any trouble. <laughs> okay, so Jeannie Safin was born in Edmonton, London, with birth defects that led to a mental handicap, which reduced her to abilities to those of a child. She was 61 years old at the time of her death. On the evening of September 15th, 1982, 
She was at a family's home in Edmonton with her father, Jack, and her brother-in-law, Don Carroll. Um, Jeannie was sitting with her father in the kitchen. Jack was looking away from Jeannie when his attention was drawn to his daughter as she was suddenly on fire. Whoa. Jack Saffin and his son-in-law, Don, put out the fire using water from the kitchen, called an ambulance. She was treated to the hospital, admitted to a burn unit, all that stuff, until eight days later, she died of bronchopneumonia. So we're talking spontaneous human combustion here. Yes. Dang. Oh, I've heard of this. Safin's case has been held as an example of spontaneous human combustion by ter- paranormal researchers and authors. Jack Safin's, this is what's crazy. Jack Safin's son-in-law, Don Carroll, who was in the home at the time of the fire, was stated that Jeannie had flames coming from her mouth and made roaring noises like a dragon. Both Carol and Jack Saffin have repeatedly claimed that prior to Jeannie uh, being lit of flame, there was no source of ignition in the kitchen except for the pilot light on the gas stove. Carol also states that Jeannie's clothes were unburned and that there was no smoke damage in the kitchen. Was she on oxygen? No. Crazy. Nope. So hold up. Her clothes didn't get damaged? So she burned. So early reports said no, and then there was reports that said yes some of the paramedics said that there was damage Dang. but the father-in-law or the father and the brother-in-law claimed that there was no damage to the clothes that her she spontaneously got on fire and it was all from inside of her i mean i've seen this before and yeah with jack jack but like i've, I've also cooking? seen some like yeah. unsolved mysteries and stuff where they i i was really interested <laughs> yeah. with this when i was a uh-huh. kid because they would find people would die from it and the same thing would happen with all cases of people who died from spontaneous combustion from the knee down was fine their mm. legs were always left behind. See, and I didn't Everything read anything on this ash. one with her, but... Well, d- she didn't die, right? No, eight days later. Yeah, so so the, a lot of people, they spontaneously combust. No one's there to put them out, and they die, and their their body is just ash, except from the knees down. See, I, I heard something on spontaneous yeah. combustion, too, that the flame, that the heat is beyond any flame, that it, it just burns them and there's even there was one story i saw where somebody um they caught flame in the upstairs of their house it burnt a hole through the floor jeez but yet nowhere else it was so hot and so quick it just boom and it burnt through the floor they went to ash and then they were there was no other burn marks on the walls, the ceiling, nothing. It just burnt a hole through the floor and left a pile of ash. So, yeah, because I've heard, I've researched it and they compare it to like napalm. Yeah. Like to the, to the wow. temperature of napalm. You know what I kind of think? I think of uh, Iron Man 3. You know, when they've got the, they turn the humans in like, like the, in the bombs or whatever. The, yeah. It's got the fire and there's, and it it blows up with such heat. Mm-hmm. And huh. what year did this happen? Uh, 1982. Crazy. Really? Show me. What, what are we looking at? So I'll throw, I'll throw these pictures up, but like some of the pictures of people dealing with spontaneous combustion, their legs are always left behind. What the French toast? <laughs> well, they Jeez. tried saying it was uh, a buildup of, What's what's some sort farts? of chemicals? Methane. methane, methane, but they say that methane doesn't burn nearly as hot. But mm. there you go, people. You got a fart. That's I I fart because I don't want to die. <laughs> in <a ball> of fire. <laughs> holding holding it. How in. many See? cases of spontaneous combustion are there? Let's find out. See Confirmed. what what boggles my mind in this one is that literally she was just sitting in a chair, doing and nothing. And next thing you know, he's. Her dad's sitting over there by the sink or whatever, and he just glances over, and she's on fire out of nowhere. Like, how does that happen? That makes no sense. It's weird. So this this claims the apparent occurrence has never been proven, because they still have no idea no. what's happening, but has been linked to around 200 incidences. Are you telling me I could just die one day? <laughs> there is a chance. You could light a flame right now, just boosh. <laughs> could you imagine? We're no. just sitting here podcasting. Blah, 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 blah. Austin just goes blaze. Just boom. <laughs> oh, 
my god, they killed Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. I thought that was just a joke. There's a. I just searched what are the chances of spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> and there's this thing saying um, th this actually says fewer than 150 cases in the last 2000 years. But the picture associated with the page is a girl <laughs> dr drinking, <laughs> drinking out of a gasoline cart. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why imagine, imagine throw it down her throat. Oh. Was she eating anything? Like, nope. I'm just trying to think of like no, a chemical just, reaction. The only thing I can think of that I kind of read up on it was she had the first Taco Bell. Yes. <laughs> I love Taco Bell. <laughs> How dare you? It was um, that Diablo hot sauce. That's what it was. Ya. It'll get you. They were, they were saying it could be a possibility of you've got the oxygen in the air mm. and you might have nylons on or something like that. And a small little friction spark just poof. catches the methane in your body or something. Yeah. Just well, something happens. And poof. I remember watching some documentary talk about it and they, they also talked about how like it can happen with other objects. Like let's say you, you have a garage and you have like a pile of dirty rags. You throw rags that have like I've grease and that, all yeah. kinds of different stuff on. It's hot like, enough. It could just tip, like those certain chemicals could react in a way that it causes combustion well yes. that happens a lot with hay bales uh -huh. yes exactly. i was gonna say that that's happened personally yeah. when we were stacking hail or hail hail with hay, hail, huh? hay bales there's the older hay that we piled up and it did it started smoking it didn't actually catch on fire but it's that's chemical so reaction is that but what's what's in the hay that causes that um it's just as it breaks down it creates so much heat uh, well yeah, now that you say that, have you ever have you ever done the trick where you put ice in your hand, put salt on yes. it, and yeah. close your hand, and yes. it burns you, uh -huh. gives you a blister? Same Opposite, thing? but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it burns you. you it's the chemical hot. reaction. It's the chemical reaction no, of the that salt. Doesn't, that's, that gives you frostbite. Yes. That's, I thought it burned. No. That's what I thought I mean, it was burned. Frostbite, frostbite is a burn. I guess it's a frost true. burn. It's a chemical burn is what but, it is. Yeah, hay Chemicals. bales, like the middle starts to... It like generate Pressure. heat from decomposing, right? Yeah. Yep. So oh, decompose. Wild. So you can't have it underneath like a tarp. Maybe that's it. And so it starts to decompose on the inside, and it gets the maybe which you're that decomposing on the inside. Maybe she was pop. decomposing, and on all the it takes is one little particle that yeah. gets How? hot enough to ignite, and then it starts igniting. It's all the, excited. And How old was she? Well, it's 61. like it's like your your grass clippings too. Putting them in your garbage can. Have you ever? Had that to where you lift it up and it's so hot in there. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. it's because oh, it's breaking no. down and it stinks. Yeah. But yeah. same thing. It gets it gets hot. Yeah. So don't have your grass filled garbage can next to your house. Yeah. Well, I'm as mine that's is mulch. right now. I'm gonna remember that because that's where mine is at too. It's a lot harder <laughs> with that because there's moisture in it. But yeah, it's the same. It gets hot enough to combust, but it, and if there was ever anything that was kindling enough or or didn't have enough moisture in it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Interesting. Uh huh. All right. Crazy. I'm excited for the, 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 the next one. Were you? What were you gonna say? <laughs> or, I got stuck on. The, 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 I thought you were gonna say number eleven or so. That it's like man, he really doesn't know how to count. <laughs> Five. <laughs> <laughs> number seven. Okay. This is my personal favorite one. Seven. 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 <gasps> seven. Seven. <laughs> um, this is something that I personally actually really do believe in. The Loch Ness Monster. Ooh. Oh, Nessie? Boy. Yes. Oh, a little All Nessie. Right. A little Nessie. Um, according to Scot Scottish folklore, a mystical creature called a water horse lures small children to a watery grave by tricking them to ride on its sticky back. Ew, sticky? I didn't hear yes. that part of it. I never heard that part either. That sounds yeah. dark. Uh, the Loch Ness Monster became an English wonder in 1933 after witness accounts made newspaper headlines. No hard evidence, though, of the creature has ever been recorded, with several pictures being proven as hoaxes. There's mm. a very popular picture out there. It's that black and white one. Yeah. It looks like a little, you know, water like a horse. dinosaur yeah, head. Like a dinosaur type. head yeah. sticking out of the water. Classic. It's been proven as a hoax. What is it, though? Um, if I remember right, I want to say it was like an old float from a parade that uh -huh. someone had created. And That sounds right. Yeah. I think I've heard about that. Smart move. Did you hear about uh, the connection between Loch Ness and Bear Lake? And the Bear Lake monster. 
Were you getting into that? No. Let's hear Sorry. about it. Go oh. for it. No, I... I've... So so they say they've never found the bottom of Loch Ness, and they say they've never found the bottom of Bear Lake. There is a rumor that they are connected, and that the Bear Lake monster is Loch Ness, is Nessie. That's why it's so long between sightings, because it takes them forever to swim. Yep. Yeah. Mm. I like it. Mm. I like it. They really can't find the bottom of Bear Lake? I, I think that's been proven to be shenanigans. Shh. But... I mean, you know what's funny with who are these guys? <laughs> I know, like, let us drain. <laughs> you know what's funny with me is that I 100% believe in Bigfoot, but Loch Ness has me skeptical. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, see, I, I 100% believe in Loch Ness Monster. Well, I, we've all I seen love... Bigfoot. It's Jenny. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you don't get the it's joke. A, it's a, yeah. Huh? All right. It's not an insult to her. It's just that Jenny's anytime like a... Austin and Jess start recording, Jenny's mysteriously in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and, and, so, and now she plays to it. And now she does a little arm swing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. <sighs> so... Fun, fun little Loch Ness one on would be cool. Loch Ness, I think. Now, would be have awesome. they really not found the bottom of Loch Ness? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Let us ask. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Did you, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you ever see that Simpsons where they emptied Loch Ness? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> they emptied it and flooded the town, and then they found the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God>. Wow. <laughs> It's one of those pivotal moments in the show where they realize they are the monster for well, flooding their own town. Well, it's funny, actually, because they they empty the lake and f- actually flood the whole town next to it. And then all of a sudden, Homer's like, oh, there it is. And it's the float that oh, God. was disguised oh. or whatever. And they're like, no, that's not it, Dad. That's the real one. And it pans over. And then there's the real one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm not but, 100% sure, but I think the Metallica song, um, The Thing That Should Not Be, is about Loch Ness. Um, Pretty sure. I could I be love, wrong. I love the face Cam just pulled up. Cam, got a weird face over there. Well, so they, they, they measured Loch Ness at 813 feet deep, but then someone else found a crevice. Crevasse. About nine miles east of Inverness, and... It measure, he measured it with state-of-the-art sonar equipment at 889 feet. Mm. Hmm. Maybe that's where Loch Ness has been the whole time in that small little crevice. Well, so here's my question. Forever. Yeah. But, what, What's know. to say Loch Ness monster hasn't died? Or Bigfoot I've always kind of died. Well, Bigfoot, because he's a the species that still is around. But Loch Ness is just the one dinosaur <laughs> in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of big feet. He's huh? like, you won't take this away from me. <laughs> you will never. You won't convince me otherwise. He threw an apple at you. <laughs> Can't forget that. Well, I think I'm... it was a lost hobo. <laughs> <laughs> False. They wouldn't waste their food. <laughs> I can't pipe the darn thing. <laughs> I mean, uh. I, I, I'd say, to your point, like, if Nessie's real, there would definitely have to be some sort of underwater caves, caves or something, something that hasn't get been out. found. Right. And, and who knows? Maybe there's a lip down there, right? Maybe there's, like... A piece like this, and then a piece like this, and so they can't even get the sonar to, <laughs> to see read it, that there's it's a... like woo, it's like a toilet. You know yep. how the toilet's got the thing, the S bend. It's that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it could be. I like it. I would like to say that he's there. That'd be awesome. He is there. Okay. All right. Uh, it's official. I'm saying it right now. Maybe they're friends. Him and Bigfoot. There Probably. you go. Bigfoot, Bigfoot rides his, rides, yeah, he rides his sticky rides back. His sticky back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, there are some times when you just look around and you're like, these are my friends. <laughs> oh. Cheers. Oh. All right. Number six. Number six. Number six. Stonehenge. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That one fascinates me. Uh, Stonehenge is crazy. Stonehenge. You clock. know what? You know, not to take any fire from your story no, here. You're good. No, but this is He took it from yours. So. I have heard. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, that's true. Crap. <laughs> I have heard you go. Where is Stonehenge located? In what? England. In England. In England. You, it's literally like right off the freeway. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like not like. Close to London, isn't it? 
No. I don't know. Either way, no, I've just it's, heard it. It's, it's literally, literally right off the freeway. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's not in like popular, back in some yeah, it's, it's hidden in a location. Area. You can see it in uh, in Thor Dark World. Like You can see the freeway. Oh. Yeah, there's an angle, and you mm-hmm. can see the freeway in the distance. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's hear okay. about Stonehenge. So modern um, scholars mm-hmm. has dated the beginning of the construction of the Stonehenge to around 3000 B.C., pushing it back into the prehistoric age. How was it built? Various theories have been advanced for account for uh, to account for it. Some scholars have argued that the great stones could have been moved on a rolling carpet of logs. Others believe they might have been transported on a kind of primitive, unwilled railway wagon sliding along lubricated and specially built tracks. Magnus is wet or sticky back. There you go. <laughs> Yep, and he was helped along by Atlantis's advanced civilization. Mm. I like it. The connections. And they <laughs> used London's hammer to build it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then they all hammer. spontaneously combusted, <laughs> and he couldn't tell anyone about it. <laughs> there you go. So I believe it. <laughs> what's the purpose of Stonehenge? Gateways. Early what? Gateways. Mm, kind of. Early speculation had that druids performed human sacrifices there. Really? And indeed, the headless body of a Saxon was recovered during 20th century excavations on the site. Ooh. Those dirty Saxons. (laughs) I mean, he was the dead one. He was the dead one. The druids were the one that killed him. That's why they killed him, because he was a dirty Saxon. (laughs) Dirty. A druish princess. Um, However, William Stukely first advanced the idea in the 17th century that the notion that there is a connection between Stonehenge Mm -hmm. and astronomy and has gathered growing support and now constitute the most common inter- interpretation of the structure's purpose, um, which now is being supported as a calendar. Really? Oh, yes. yes. That's what I had heard. Hmm. So now, quick side note. Was it Stonehenge where they started digging down? No, yeah. you're thinking Easter oh, Island. Oh, no, that was the... E- and they were finding actual bodies. Oh, yeah. So the Easter them. Island heads have bodies. Yes. They're like twice the size of their heads. Yeah, okay. So that's something separate. Which I, I saw a meme on that before. It said, we found out the real thing of Stonehenge, and it shows Easter Island bodies, and on the other side, it's the Stonehenge, and it's their feet. Oh. <laughs> it's their toes <laughs> sticking out of the ground. <laughs> that's kind of funny. It's kind of what was funny. But. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, so Easter Island, those ones, yeah, they started digging down and actually found like mm. bodies. So not to like derail it, but what the, the, what's the thing with Easter Island? That I don't know. Cam? Same thing. It's just this it's, it's this island in the middle of the water and it's covered in these giant stone heads. Mm-hmm. Massive, like you know, nine, ten feet tall. Mm-hmm. And they're huge. And they're solid. So again, it's same as Stonehenge, it's like, how did this get here? Yeah, because these are wicked old. It's a complete it's on mystery. an island, and there's nothing else set up, right? And, and the way they're made is just so and precise. Now we and found everything. out they have bodies, and they dug down below and found out they have a body that's the same, like twice the size of the head. Dang. So even more so, how the crap did it get there? It's been there forever because the island has built up around mm-hmm. their bodies. Interesting. Easter Island's wild, dude. Huh. That's crazy. It's Ancient gods. Ancient gods, aliens. Mm. It's aliens. It's this is what I'm saying. There's got to be links. ancient civilizations. I think of uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. It's something like that, where it's like ancient aliens like mm-hmm. that, that. Well, and you think about it with Stonehenge, because you've got some of them where it's, if, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, it's the pillars, mm. and then you've actually got tops on them. Yeah. And it's, how are they getting these tops? Yeah, so you have two, yeah. you have a big one. I mm-hmm. mean. Brontosaurus's. Loch Ness? Hey, it's dated to the prehistoric age. So. He's got flippers. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> he, he's a roots. descendant. He needs solid roots. He's a descendant. Okay. Brown brachiosaurus that fell in water. Yes. Hmm. Fact check that. Really? This, this is <laughs> the thing you're getting hung up on? You this decide. is what you're hung up on? <laughs> I know. Uh, oh, I'm just thinking Flintstones. Wouldn't you it know, be cool, though, Chris, like how they are shaped like a doorway? What if each one was a different doorway to a... Another, to another portal reality or a portal to or another dimension. holiday. 
Don't get me excited. Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, he put the two together. Done. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was that Stonehenge? I was going to say, pick your battles, Chris. I didn't, I didn't really pick force it that much. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's hard to pick a battle with this guy. You can't. You're pointing at him or me. <laughs> <laughs> that's true it's because I'll just talk until I win <laughs> um, or I that's give how up. women do it <laughs> yeah it or until I give up it works yeah, it's like okay a... you win just be quiet <laughs> <laughs> fine okay kill him <laughs> <laughs> what's... <laughs> we, what's the Billy Madison he's like we are all dumber because of your <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> oh, yes. the story. wow that was so bad <laughs> Dumber for having had to listen to that answer. <laughs> At no point were you you even close to the correct answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, all yeah. right. Middle of the pack. This number five has got to be one of my one of my favorite mysteries. I, I um, actually watched a show on it. And anyways, one of your top ten. Like yes. your fifth. Yeah. Like your fifth like favorite. My fifth favorite. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amelia Earhart. Oh yeah. Um, I like this one. So um, this one is really intriguing because I didn't really think to, in my head, I just thought she crashed mm -hmm. and died. But then I watched, um, I can't remember the name of the show, but there's this guy, his name's Josh Gates. Does a show on, I think it's on Discovery Channel. Anyways, um, he goes around and does all these searches for mysterious things that's happened, you know, anything and everything. And he did a special on Amelia Earhart. There is a lot behind this that a lot of people have speculation on. Um, but we'll start it off. So she took off 1937 on what she hoped would be the first female piloted circumnavigational flight. On the morning of July 2nd, 1937 at 7.20 a.m., uh, she reported her position, placing the Electra, which was her plane, on a course of uh, at least 20 miles southwest of the Nukamanu Islands. At 7.42, um, it picked a, uh, one of the boats that was kind of help tracking her and all that stuff, uh, picked up a message that says, we must be on you, but we cannot see you. Fuel is running low. Been unable to reach you by radio. We are flying at 1,000 feet. The ship replied, but had no uh, indication that she even heard anything. Um, and then the last communication was at 8.43 a.m. It's the last they ever heard from her. Um, many researchers believe that Earhart and Noonan, who was her co-pilot, ran out of fuel while searching for Howland Island. They ditched the seed and died. That's what I firmly believed. I was like, oh, that makes sense. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're lost, all this stuff. You basically, you're just going to ditch it, see you're dead. <clears throat> Plane goes under because they've never... Well, I take that back. They they couldn't find any indications of a plane crash. But then watching the show at Josh Gates, <clears throat> they actually did a lot of research around a lot of the islands that were close by. They have found what could possibly be parts of her plane. Hmm. So um, there's a hypothesis called the Gardner Island hypothesis. It assumes that Earhart and Noonan, having not found Howland Island would not waste time searching for Howland. Instead, they would turn to the south and look for other islands. Eventually, the plane would make it to Gardner Island, which is one of the Phoenix Islands. This is the one that um, Josh Gates went on to saying that they actually crashed and kind of lived, went into living a life. I mean, you think it's back in, when was it, 1937? 30s. Yeah. Not a lot of communication with these islands. Mm -hmm. You know, you could crash there. You could live out the rest of your life and people could not know. They could just still believe that you're dead, especially if you're far off on where you last said you were. I mean, they're looking for her plane in this area, and she could be, you know, 40, 50 miles to the other opposite direction. Did they search the other islands back in the day? Um, so there was one other one. Um, and it's that her and Noonan were actually captured by uh, or no, I'm sorry. The, the Gardner Island one, they did search that Island and they didn't find any planes. Mm -hmm. Um, back like this was like maybe 20 years after the fact, if I remember right, they did go back and actually search the whole Island and they didn't really find any planes. No, they found civilization there, mm -hmm. but no proof that she could have been there. 
Um, another theory is that Earhart and Noonan were captured by Japanese forces um, after somehow navigating to somewhere within the Japanese South Seas Mandate. Um, in 1966, CBS correspondent Fred Gorner published a book claiming that Earhart and Noonan were captured and executed when their aircraft crashed on the, or crashed on the island of uh, Saipan or possibly in the Marshall Islands. The hard thing about that theory is, is the island of Saipan is, what did they say? It was like 150 miles out or maybe even further than that. And they don't know if the plane would have made it that far with how low a fuel she was uh -huh. on. Um, the Marshall Islands were more possible, um, but even then that was like 95 or 960 feet away or something, or miles or whatever away. Mm. And they don't know if she could have made it that far either. So where... <clears throat> Sorry, where where were the islands that they they speculated that she crashed initially? Um, over in towards the Marshall Islands area. So <clears throat> she was somewhere between, if I remember, uh, somewhere between Florida and what's in that area over yonder, uh, like the Caribbean. Kind of like she yeah, flew like the through Bermuda the Triangle. Bermuda Triangle. That's exactly what mm -hmm. I was That's getting That's what I was going to bring was up. The Bermuda in Triangle. That area. Yes. I've heard that I've heard the theory that she got lost in the Bermuda Triangle. Yes. Okay. So, but there is. So, I, man, I wish I could remember the episode that Josh Gates did on her. Um, who's, who's Josh Gates? Sorry, so he's he's a researcher, and um, he, like I said, he has a TV show on on uh, Discovery <gasps> Channel. I think it is now. Anyways, he goes out and he goes after these mysteries. Like he's. Like, he'll get these things and he'll do research on all this stuff, like any mysteries that you can think of, aliens, whatever. And he'll go out and he'll actually search for this stuff mm -hmm. as much as he possibly can. And so he did one on, like, a two-part series on Amelia Earhart. And there's actually pictures out there that people believe is Earhart and Noonan in pictures oh, on an oh, island dang. somewhere. They can't confirm that it's them, but looking at the pictures, all that stuff, side by side with other pictures of her, it looks very, very closely to her. Huh. Yeah, this guy, my wife actually has gotten really interested in the show. It's called Expedition Unknown. Yes, that's, thank you. And he, he goes to a, a ton of crazy oh, places everywhere. like this and finds some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, like he's gone to, if you ever heard of the, the Island of the Dolls? I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. It's just an island with a bunch of dolls hanging. Like mm -hmm. in trees or what? Yeah. Yes. Creepy, and it's it's <laughs> it's uh, believed to be Cam's haunted hell. and all that stuff. <laughs> and he goes and he tries to prove anything, and he tries, he goes and looks for the truth. He doesn't try to disprove anything; he tries to prove stuff. That'd be mm. oh man, that's crazy. So Cam, and you want to do a men try doll island? <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna light it on fire? <laughs> <laughs> we can't. Do you want? Yes. You know there was flamethrowers. Yes. That'd I'm be down. Great. But I didn't want to go too far into Amelia Earhart. I think this would be a really fun podcast to get into, like deep dive into. That would be a Deal. fun one. I like, love mysteries so much. Amelia I Earhart, too. it's so fascinating because there's so much out there that I, after especially after watching that, um, that Expedition Unknown, I almost firmly believe that she survived the crash. But it was so far dated back in time that there was really no communication. And so she just went on she to just, live her life. They went on to live their life. You so know, she was a real life story of lost. Yes. I mean, was she an enemy of J.P. Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a way to leave it in. Was there an episode. iceberg in the, in the vicinity yeah. of any, no, anywhere? No, she won tickets to be on the Titanic That's or the Olympic. He was supposed to be on the flight, wasn't he? But he canceled last minute. <laughs> It's funny you bring that up because that's my number four. <laughs> oh my God. The Titanic. Is, is the Titanic I know you really so well. Olympic? <laughs> oh, man. Well, there you go. There's number four and number three. <laughs> You're welcome for all these three segues. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. I, I kind of ran. I, I couldn't find a tenth idea. Like, I got to number four and I was like, oh. I couldn't find anything, so I needed a filler. So that was my filler. Is the Titanic really the Olympic? <laughs> there we go. And we discussed that in depth. Yes. On our Titanic or the Olympic podcast. What's that one called? Talking uh, Dolphins. 
No, the unbelievable. Uh, Chris, let's not be ridiculous. They don't the talk. Undeniable they truth. They flip icebergs. Of the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Something like that. That's a few episodes ago. We'll link it below. Okay. That's hilarious. That's <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. I had to throw that in there somewhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> Love just it. for Chris's sake. I mean, <laughs> it's just for Chris. And now, a word from our sponsor. What sponsor? Yeah, we don't have any sponsors, but to those of you listening, if you would like to sponsor us, you can hit that join button right below this episode or hit those support buttons on our pages. Tony and, needs help. And you could feed one of Tony's kids for as little as two ninety nine a month. You can make a difference. You can put food on our plates. Please, dear God, give us money. <laughs> no, really, though. For a small sponsor, you can shut these guys up. You are pulled from the wreckage. <laughs> For real, though, if you guys decide to sponsor us, we would really appreciate it. You guys keep us free from censorship so that we can talk about topics that we want to talk about. So thank you so much. Back to the topic. Yes. To number three. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Mystery of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Oh, oh all right. that was real quiet. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. Mystery Good. of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Giza. Like not pizza. Not pizza. Giza. Giza. This one blew my mind. This one is beyond anything you can fathom. Like, is this something new that you found out? No, this is just a bunch of other stuff. I just never really looked into it before. Uh huh. And I was curious about it this time, and I just, it blew my mind. So, built sometime between 10,500 BC and 3,500 BC. It's 750 feet long at each base, situated along the four cardinal points north, south, east, and west. The corners are? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. The ratio of its circumference is the original uh, to its original height is equal to the value of pi, 3.14. So wait, circumference, but it's not a circle, right? So I drew a circle around it. Yes. Okay, okay. So the the ratio of its circumference from there is the original value of pi, 3.14. Wow. (sighs) Which is something that's not supposed to have been known for more than another millennium after these were built. Son of a gun. Okay. Okay. The Great Pyramid is positioned exactly at the latitude and longitude lines that contain more land and less sea than any other place on the Earth. It's right in the geographical center of the Earth. Hmm. It's also interesting to note that if you multiply the height of the pyramid by a thousand million, you are left with 98,000 million miles which corresponds approximately to the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Well, I mean, this all just sounds like... <laughs> yeah. e- now you're digging. Even you dig <laughs> but a few times this number... <laughs> one million. <laughs> no. It's better. Okay, I, yeah. I hope it does. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm speculating. I'm sorry. I know you're speculating. I'm but sorry. He's peeing on your combustion I right know. now. <laughs> that's like, how can you, I don't know, that not like you can't just it's like, really how can you get that number. precise? That's not a random number. How do you get that precise? The distance between you the find sun the and number. the earth. <laughs> the distance between the sun and the earth is the exact equalization of the height of the pyramid times the number. Times what number though? 98 million, or no, uh, by a thousand million. A thousand million. A thousand mil- exactly, a thousand just, like, exactly a thousand tr- million. You times that contillion? by the height of the pyramid, and you get the exact but is there, is measurement there, from the Earth to the sun. Is there a special thing to a thousand million that I'm missing? The fact that it's an even number. Okay. Yeah. That okay. it, it's not like and the fact that times the height by 1,275,000. Yeah, and the fact that okay. when like, these were made... There was no way to know what the distance between the Earth and the Sun is. Okay, okay, okay. So I see. Okay, it's I'm just following. Coincidences. I'm following. You're you're uh, you're convincing me. Back. me. Okay, all right. <laughs> you're all convincing right. me. Okay. 
They estimate that between 2.3 and 2.6 million blocks of stone were used to build the Great Pyramid. Each stone has been estimated to weigh approximately between 2 and 20 tons each. How many blocks? 2.3 to 2.6 million. Million blocks? Yes. Oh Damn. my, that's some great Lego work. I was right. I would have guessed a you know a couple thousand. I, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I misheard him. Yeah. Oh my okay. gosh. So when you think about that, 20, two tons to how much? Twenty to twenty. Two tons. to twenty tons. Holy balls. Thanks. When that's you think all. about that, that's two point five million blocks of stone that weigh between two and twenty tons each. How did they cut the blocks with laser like precision? and fit them perfectly in place. How did they lift and transport the rocks from their original position? How did they move across the terrain, desert, water, and sand, and then lift them on top of each other in order to build the pyramid? Work ethic. (laughs) (laughs) Even if the workers had achieved the impossible and unimaginable feat of 10 blocks piled up on the top of each other a day, that would have assembled the two and a half million stone blocks into the stone pyramid in about 250,000 days. That's 664 years. That's crazy. So even the person who started the pyramid would have never got to even see the finished product. Mm. Well, not even generations afterward. Exactly. 664 years? Yes. Yeah. You're yeah, talking. That's like three. Ge- that's six talk, generations. That's, and that's <laughs> if, if they live to be a yeah. hundred. Exactly. And I remember my son. They, like, like I said, achieve the impossible of ten blocks. Ten blocks piled on the top of each other a day. Remember that's my ten son. Ten blocks a day. Follow directions exactly. Exactly. They didn't have IKEA to call for extra and parts. No. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, Cam. The stone that's used in the blocks. Oh, it came from really far from away. From really far away. Yeah. It was nowhere near them. Yes. They had to go a very far distance to well, get it. Well, we already know how they transported it. Loch Ness Monster. St- <laughs> stinky back. Nessie just hauling it around. Just there. We all know that back. Bigfoot can lift at least that, maybe double. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we know there's a species of them. It's not even one. It's like yeah. multiple. Many, and the Loch Ness Monsters <laughs> are their horses, apparently. <laughs> Pennsylvania water steam. horse. Water horse. Exactly. Ah. See? Which, and I'm going to tie this into my number two. Okay. Aliens. Wait, wait, wait. Is there more to the Giza? I'm very intrigued now. I, I've always loved the there's, crazy There is tons more. There, yes. there is tons Doesn't it, more. It lines was, up perfectly with the North Star. Yes. No. Orion's Belt. The three, the three, the, the three pyramids, the three line pyramids perfectly line up with, with Orion's it. Belt. Really? Yes. Hmm. Which, why I said this brings me into my second one aliens like okay. all, all the time because orion actually belt. moves orion moves the constellation moves with well that's Earth why moves. i was wondering if it was the north star because <laughs> you're right <laughs> <laughs> point taken but but i mean yeah but and i, I mean, lost it again <laughs> the, stars, <laughs> the stars are moving around earth <laughs> well <laughs> it's, all right thanks so, thanks so. yeah the earth moves excuse me so in our perception the constellation moves, but yeah. it's Earth moving. Yeah. Thanks, Galileo. But with that, <laughs> <laughs> oh my hell! <laughs> Breaking new ground there, Copernicus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me all about those numbers, Pythagoras. Oh. I feel like this is a Key and Peele episode. Is this wrong? Am I wrong? Is that not Key and Peele? That sounds like Key and Peele. It's not. It's- <laughs> That's Cam and Tony. <laughs> wow, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, number two, aliens. Yes. Let's hear it. Which we've already discussed, you know, in length on one of our other podcasts. But I firmly believe with the age, with the pyramids, there had to be other help at hand. Mm. I don't think these Egyptians at the time, anything, I don't think they could have done this by themselves. In all honesty, with the with technology, how precise everything is yeah. like as far as it just its coordinates alone being mm. in the center, literally the center of the earth and having all four sides in each, you know, east, west, south, north. There's more to this than what meets the eye. Well, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's apocalypse. 
right? In X Men Apocalypse. Touche. No, he, no, he's... it was clearly the Stargate or Transformers. <laughs> Dang! I love all these options. <laughs> I mean, in Stargate, the aliens mm. came down in a pyramid. That's true. And they were dressed like Anubis. That's true. And Ra. That's true. And he was named Ra. Mm hmm. Stargate has more facts. Or Egyptians had a lot more technology the, than we knew of that was hidden. Dude. Atlantis. See, that's... Actually, they actually do. That's linked to Egyptians. What yes, if, Atlantis does, yes. What if... So Atlantis was in the ocean. Giza was as far away from the ocean as possible. What if they were enemies? There were wars. Mm, between the sand people and the water people. Yeah. Hmm... Mm. What if it was all of it? <laughs> what if it was Transformers? Right? It was Stargate. J.P. Morgan. It was J.P. Morgan. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> he paid him off. The Olympic was transporting a mummy. <gasps> oh, the build the pyramids. The connections. <laughs> Dang. Everything links back oh, to J.P. Yes. Morgan. We need J.P. Morgan shirts. Yeah, yes. right. It was, it, it was most definitely J.P. Morgan. So <laughs> this is off topic, but in the Bible it says Goliath was a giant, right? Yeah. Did they ever find proof of giants? Maybe the giants that giants. almost made my list. The giants of Kandahar. Giants almost made my list. There is no huh. proof that giants are out there. Not anymore. Other than well, they've they've dug up some, <laughs> they've dug up some burial grounds and stuff like that, and they've. I have noticed that there's people larger, large in stature, uh -huh. but the interpretation of giants could be that, you know, maybe the average height was five feet and back in, you know, how I mean, little pygmies. Yeah. 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 And that, you know, cause Goliath, I think they said was nine feet. Dang. And so <laughs> Bro, it was just straight club in kindergarten. Right. <laughs> And Wish so, I was mean, on the jazz. You have your average feet of maybe what? Five feet, five feet, five inches. Yeah. And you got a nine foot guy. They also lived forever back then, right? Yeah. Didn't they live like a couple hundred years old back you're in talking, biblical you're times? Talking like, you're, you're talking, talking like way, like, way back. Genesis. No. You're going like to Genesis. Noah, Noah, Noah was like 650 gotcha. years old. He's got that London hammer <laughs> swinging. There you go, dude. That was Adam's Wait, first hammer. what are we hammer. talking about now? <laughs> <laughs> it was he, on the website. He had, oh. re, he had to repopulate and replenish the earth, okay? <laughs> Back then, With it was called the London, London Hammer. Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> it was called the Ark. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. All right. I will raise my glass to you. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask you a real big favor here, Zach. Drag this next one out as long as possible. Tony's checked his phone on time like 20 times the last like five minutes. He's no, time no, stamping. I'm time He's stamping. time stamping. Oh, oh he's you're doing, doing his job. Oh, I was going to say, I was going to say, I you thought want me. Jenny, I thought Jenny was pinging you. <laughs> you, want me, you want me to drag out number one? Wait, we're still talking about number two. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, who I does get, number two work for? I didn't really get into number two. I, it, aliens had to make the list. And I am so intrigued by aliens that it had to be number two. Uh huh. But we've already talked about it quite a bit. And, and we, we probably will talk will about it. We'll talk about it more. Absolutely. Um, and I, I want it, and I, I felt like that was a good tie-in with the pyramids because I, there's more I, to the pyramids than what meets the eye. I'm I, sorry. Well, and they're still finding stuff, right? Yes. They what do you mean? Like in the pyramids, they haven't uncovered everything. Because if you look at diagrams of it, this giant pyramid straight up has like a tunnel and a burial chamber, and like. An exhaust shaft and like that. And it. the pyramids too, they weren't their sandy, dusty cells that they were. They were actually like painted. Painted. They were what? nice, white, I, shiny. I think they were weren't they supposed to be flat originally? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They were like flat and, and because painted of painted the entire thing. And because of so corrosion. Captain the... Gold. Yeah. And then because of corrosion and time, that's why they look like they are now. Like they're really? made out of Minecraft mm -hmm. blocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Man. Have you seen that meme where it's like um, something about like, oh, you can have all your riches now because when we die, we all end up in the same place and it shows a couple caskets next to each other. And then it's like, speak for yourself and it shows the pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fun fact, Nicolas Cage has a pyramid-shaped mausoleum for 
when he dies. I've heard that actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. How National big? Oh, boy. It's it's pretty it's pretty big. Good old Nick. Cage. So I'm gonna go back. So the pyramids they were flat. So they they had stones that were cut to fit in the slots. That's why they said laser like precision cuts that fit perfectly. So angled cuts. Okay. Yes, angled cuts. Everything that fit perfectly. I mean, big enough for one person, but still. That's awesome. <laughs> Pretty dope. You know, I retract. That's after you money. <laughs> I, retract, uh, I retract my uh, my will. I no longer want to be a firework. <laughs> make, make I already got a, plans uh, for this. Make me a freaking pyramid. I also wants to be buried in a pyramid. A no, fireworks. I want to be so that's, a pyramid. That is supposedly what the pyramids look like: is white, smooth. Yeah. And just, now, now they're the blocky. Now they're kind of the blocky because of corrosion. And uh-huh. how did hmm. that? Do they have proof that there? I don't was know like if it was white blocks? or anything, but they like it was painted and it covered was, in no, symbols. No, it, it, it and was stuff. white. It was, was a that? shiny white, like a yeah, yeah. Back to you. There's was there proof of that? Like they found mm-hmm. yeah. remnants of it. Yeah, crazy. Now, they, here's my question: If say these were built by aliens. Right. That's kind of what we're alluding to. I'm not saying. So we're yeah, just this saying. is this is essentially what they believed it looked like. So like he just said, white with Kinda a gold like cap stone. Kind of like on our dollar bills, all, huh? Illuminati. So here's, here, <laughs> here's my thing, right? If these were built by a superior technology, wouldn't they know that over time it would erode and it would be better to make it of something... I, more permanent adamantium they had to Unless uh, you wanna... they had to build it out of the materials that earth had to offer at the yep. time mm-hmm. uh-huh. or i mean it really depends if well, this was built by an advanced they? civilization so still earthlings um they probably didn't intend on being extinct or whatever happened to get rid of them all to where we are left with their remnants because they could have no renewed it they could have renewed it built new technology gotten done but more aren't they made out of sandstone um Oh, I don't know. I didn't see that. Because granite is harder than sandstone. Yeah. Um, so, to- I do know that they there is no proof of any machinery that they might have used to help build the pyramids. Mm-hmm. They believe that if there is proof, there was a fire. I can't remember what the fire was called. It's like the fire of something. They believe that whatever proof that was helped to use build the pyramids actually burned up in that fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it was in the hull of the Titanic. Right? Yes. Well, I mean... Yeah, that's right. And, yes. and this would actually be a fun one to look up, but think of the Library of Alexandria. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. There was a fire at, the li- at a library or whatever. Yeah. So yes. this was supposed to be the biggest library in existence. Of knowledge. And, and full of all the knowledge that went into the Roman Empire, the the rise of the Egyptians, all that stuff. All this knowledge was in there and all just destroyed. Yep. Completely and utterly gone. And that's, all of it. that's where they believe that anything linked to what helped build the pyramids was actually in that mm. library. Mm. Really? So mm-hmm. where does the Sphinx come into play? Uh, it was one of, it was a, it was a Pharaoh. Was so it a built lot of around pharaohs, the same time though? Or was no, it built it later? Built it was later. Later. Oh, Pretty later. Pretty much every time a pharaoh came to power, they wanted to build some sort of monument to immortalize so themselves. Got Sphinx, right. Nubus. Right? And isn't there's, it true that the Sphinx well, is there's there's a there's a tomb that has like Anubis and Ra and other ones like on the outside of it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Isn't it true that the Sphinx's nose was shot off by Napoleon? I've I've heard that. Or yeah, maybe yeah, it was I debunked. Remember. I don't know. I can't but. remember. It's a ma- the, the the nose is really big. There, there's other theories and stuff because they, there's something super disrespectful about it. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> the French no, and the Egyptians, they were friends, and then they got a little feisty. Didn't you know that it was actually Aladdin who caused the nose to break? Gosh, well, it was he the saw guy the carving carpet, it. you know, and he got distracted and hit it too hard, and the nose broke. <laughs> Gosh, get it right, Tony. <sighs> It wasn't in the live action. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Um, But also to answer your question, Chris, the pyramid was made of limestone and granite. Oh, Oh, it was. It was. So. Limestone and granite, and I think something else, but I can't find it. You know when you, like, Google search something, and it has the answer you want right there, uh-huh. and then it cuts it off, and you go in to look at it, and you have no idea where it is. Yep. Yeah. You have to search the article for yeah. where That's it was when at. you do Control-F. Yep. I do like Command-F. That's it. The Ranelt. 
Hey, look at that. Um, granite was quarried near As- Aswan. 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 <laughs> Aswan. <laughs> yes. Okay. Which was the next first, to ask too. <laughs> the first ever. Oh, apparently, so the granite was used in the outer casing of the pyramid, typically. Uh. So that would make Jeez. sense to what you were saying, that it would it would be stronger and resist a lot longer. Hmm. Crazy. They also used basalt. Basalt. Mm-hmm. What it's is another basalt? hard another hard stone. Okay. It's the brother to assault. Granite <laughs> diorite, cyanite, and basalt. Wow. <laughs> and but pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and and they can't be cut with copper tools alone. Instead, they were worked with time consuming methods like pounding with dolerite, drilling, and sawing with the aid of an abrasive such as a quartz sand. Crazy. Jeez. So, I mean, that because that's the other thing. You have such hard materials. Yeah. They didn't really have the tools to yep. cut these materials quickly. Laser like precision. Dang. It's freaking nuts. Lasers. Oh. And you freaking think about laser. it too, like 650 years to do 10 blocks a day with all of that had, they had to do. And number, uh, number two, you get to the top of the pyramid. How are you getting those blocks all the way up there? How are you getting 20 tons of weight? To the top of a pyramid like that. Yeah. Like. Well, how? it'd be the two tons because it'd be the smaller as it goes up. Well, yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, st- yeah. but still. still, that's a lot of weight. I mean, two tons. And I mean, yeah. to talk about their it, their actual channel, they created like air ducts and all this mm-hmm. different stuff inside and, and doors and, and traps and all these things. I was going to say, do they really it. make booby traps in those things? Yeah. Or is that just a so, booby thing? So Egyptians, Egyptians truly, they, they very much believed in the afterlife, but they believed that you st- like kept the same body in the afterlife. So that's why they embalmed, that's why they mummified, did all this stuff. Because when you would wake up on the other side, your body would be there for you to be able to walk through Hmm. through their version of of you know afterlife and that's why they had their money because they they believed you had to pay all this stuff they had to go before anubis who would weigh your your heart against a feather and the deeds you did in this world and if if it turned out that you were bad this little creature little creepy looking creature would come and eat your heart and you would basically be banished to their version of hell jeez so it was wild they the egyptian mythology is one of the coolest things That's i think we should we should do some podcasts on I, mythologies i mm, love mythology. Mythology. oh bro it'd be so dope mm-hmm. be man fun. okay number one. Oh boy uno. number one I don't, I don't know if you guys are ready for this i'm not <laughs> nope okay now i bigfoot <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> there it is <laughs> wouldn't it be big feet <laughs> That's a yeah. I mean, yeah. There's families. I mean, <laughs> it's a yeah, species. A whole civilization. <laughs> there's apparently. a lot of them. It is. There's not just one. Bigfoot can be found. I didn't even do any research on this because I know Tony <laughs> could help me out with this. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. You can find. <laughs> I mean, they have cousins. You got the Yeti. You got the. That's pretty much the bottom of snowman. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. Sasquatch. Sa- there you go. Skunk monkey. Swamp ape. Swamp ape. I think those are all just names for Bigfoot from different regions. So they yeah, but I feel cousins. like I feel like Sasquatch and Bigfoot are pretty much interchangeable. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That one's close. Yeah, but like, yeah, like Abominable Snowman or Yeti, they is like in the Himalayas. Mm-hmm. Yes, there is one in China, and I can't remember what they call him. But they China has their out. version. Just that that scene from Monsters Inc. Welcome to the Himalayas. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's real. <laughs> Abominable. <laughs> More snuggle. like adorable. <laughs> <laughs> or how about the agreeable snowman? <laughs> but there's one. Isn't there one from like uh, shoot? What's that? Like New Guinea area too? They believed in a like Sasquatch thing that would come. St- Come in and still. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was New Guinea though. 
Might have been like Indonesia or something like that. One thing you guys need to look up is Dyatlov Pass. You ever heard of this? I've heard, heard of, of this. this. Yes. It, it's insane. And it honestly, one of my first thoughts is is like Yeti or Abominable Snowman. Yeah, is this the... Yes. That's the tent one, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, there's a documentary called The Russian Yeti, and it's about that. Yeah. yeah. It is That's terrifying. Insane. Like, short short version of the story. Basically, the, these this team of researchers, nine, nine of them, nine Russian adventurers, go off into the mountains in Russia. This is and, in the 70s. And... Uh, Gosh, those dang 70s. Right? right. I told you, God. the whole freaking world... <laughs> But, it's because uh, the whole world was drugged up. Man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> of course they're going to see some crazy crap. They essentially they stop reporting in and stuff, and so they send out a search party for them. While they find their tent torn apart from the inside, so it gets torn out. It's like they were trying to escape. Exactly. Like everything happened so quickly that they were trying to escape. A lot of some of them were found like ripped apart. Some were found butt naked, frozen dead in the in Wait, the snow. The guys were found ripped apart. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, they were found with their soft parts eaten. So their mm-hmm. eyes, their tongue, like a predator would do. Mm-hmm. Some of them were found frozen up in a tree, like they went up into a yep. tree to some escape naked. something. Most of them didn't have enough clothes on. What? It's it's not. The tear it that on, sounds mm-hmm. like they had a bad trip. The tear on the tent was on the opposite side of the door, so something was approaching the door, and they had to cut their way out the back. Mm-hmm. What? It's, it's wild. It's, it's crazy. crazy. But I always That's think insane. I always think like a bomb. Yep. Snowman, Yeti, wolves. No, they they couldn't find any tracks. Nope. Of like mm-hmm. wolves and stuff. Well, and, and not to mention, I want to say that the damages to the body it wasn't it w- yeah. wasn't it wasn't like, like not a bear like like it wasn't wolf or... wasn't indicative of a of a so they typical didn't... predator. So the tracks yeah. did they find yeti tracks? I can't remember exactly what they found. Well, it like, was up it was up in this. I don't think they found tracks. No, they, found... they followed the tracks to find some of the people. Oh, to oh, say that's right. right. Yeah, I I don't know. Windigo. I think they did find that. There's also that. Well, and the one part, and this is kind of where it could get, you know, you could have your own opinion on, but they had footage. Like, they took a camera with them. But, again, keep in mind it was the 70s, so it's not going to be the greatest. Mm-hmm. But they, had, they were documenting their journey, and at a certain point in their journey, they started saying that something was stalking them. Mm-hmm. And they would catch slight footage in the trees of something. You c- couldn't ever really make it out, but oh, it was creepy. So they didn't know it's what cool. it was. Tracking. They never saw what it was. Huh. And they would know if it was a wolf pack or bear or something. Right. It was yeah. it was just one thing. It wasn't and I want to like in the footage, it was too tall to be a bear. But like it wasn't, you couldn't see it well enough to say it was on two legs or anything like that. But it was definitely too tall to huh. be a bear. Crazy. So what? What? What are your findings? What? What did? What made this your number one? Oh, because I just love the intrigue of Bigfoot. This is something I've always. I'm like Tony. Like something since I was a little kid that has always intrigued me. Um, I remember being with a group of my friends. I mean, living in you know up close by mountains and stuff like that. We'd always just randomly go out every once in a while. We'd go camp out and, you know, somewhere and just look for Bigfoot. Um, Fun little tidbits about it. Um, So one of my friends um, who grew up by me and stuff like that, his grandpa. Yeah, so they own Barker Fish Farm. Um, It's up there in North Ogden. Um, They used to have a trailer there they'd spend you know they would sleep there all the time and stuff during the summer and stuff like they're trying to take care of everything and um one night this is his grandpa he goes into the kitchen so they're in a trailer they're up high he goes into the kitchen to grab a oh i got the goosebumps already. i feel like you've said <laughs> i've heard I've, this story yeah. I heard this. so Keep he, going. I like he it. goes he goes into the trailer uh he, he goes out to the the kitchen to get a glass of water and he's looking right out the window, and there's something with red eyes staring right back at him. Mm. The thing outside had to be at least eight to nine feet tall with how high the trailer up. And he said he was staring eye to eye with this thing. 
Um, he kind of just finished the water, put it down, walked away. Just it creeped him out so bad he walked away. The next morning, he went outside to double check because it was a wet night. There was footprints, and he actually got a mold of the footprints. He still has it to this day. I've seen it, and it is a big foot. I mean, it's <laughs> it's a ca- it's a molding of a big foot, basically. Well, I know Logan Canyon has had a lot of sightings. Logan Canyon Logan has had a lot of sightings. Um, there was trip. there was one sighting of a a guy claims he was. Um, um, doing the snow removal for Logan Canyon. And he was coming on his way back down, and he said he saw a figure on one side of the road, literally took two steps to cross the road. It was running, took two steps to cross the road. By the time he got up and parked to see what it was, um, it was gone. And he said that um, he tried to do it himself, tried to recreate it himself, because he's like, I'm, I'm about a normal guy, six feet, you know, six two. He goes, I tried to recreate crossing this road in two steps. He's like, I could do it. Could not do it. Hmm. And so, same thing there. Um, Wasn't there footage of that? I swear I remember there is footage Mm -hmm. of that thing leaping across Mm -hmm. the road. You just see a black thing, yeah, because he's got, I mean, he's got his footage on going, yeah. And it's like two or three steps. It literally just boom, 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 gone. That's crazy. I remember seeing that footage a while ago. I heard too that the infamous footage of uh, yeah. of it down by the riverbed of you know in the class, Oregon, right? I think it was in yes, yeah. that's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought it was in uh, California. Oh, maybe that's where it but, is. Um, but well, most heard- most of, it was in Northern California. Most of the sightings, like the biggest concentration, is up the Pacific. Yes. Coast, the West Coast. But I've heard that uh, they tried to debunk this and. and they 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 can't like for as old as the footage is there's there's muscle movement like they've broken it down there's actual muscle movement everything in that footage mm-hmm. and so did you ever um, did you ever see the video of the the ridge walker i don't think Big so uh-huh. so again another one and it's actually right here so it's a youth group was camping in the marble mountains wilderness um in california and there's video and this kid's like, this kid's like, what, who's on the ridge? And they all look and there's this big creature up on the ridge and they call Bigfoot ridge walkers. Cause a lot of times they'll walk on the ridges of mountains and stuff. Mm-hmm. So they have perfect views, know what's going on, can get to their food quickly, all this stuff. And the video is crazy. Like oh. they just watch this giant and it's huge. Like this mm-hmm. big thing on the ridge and it just like walks off the other side, disappears. See, See and that's another thing that's always intrigued me is, um, so being of LDS background, um, there's a story that one of our prophets, um, who was it? Uh, oh, we talked about it. It was, it was one of was the... It Ezra? Was it Benson? Or McKay? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this exact thing. And wow. said the name. One of the prophets Cause, in cause the book. I, I claimed it was Parley P. Pratt. I thought it was Joseph F. Smith. I think you're right. That might have actually been who it is. Anyways, um, they were on horseback. And an animal-like creature came up to him. He's on horseback, standing next to him, about nine feet tall. This thing was on foot. He's on horseback, nine feet tall. Actually had a conversation with it um, and claimed that it is actually Cain, still walking the earth, from Cain and Abel. Really? The yes. sons of Adam. Because Cain, by killing Abel, has now been... Um, well, cursed. cursed to walk mm-hmm. the land for the rest of his rest of eternity. Oh, so speculation is that Cain is Bigfoot? Yes. That kind of thing, yeah. Yes. It's like a that's little, the story fun, behind a little it all. Mormon myth kind yeah, of thing. Mormon myth See, and that story. one, like as as cool as that story is, that one I, I have a hard time with because if it was just Cain, then how do you explain sightings all over the world? Yeah. So I mean maybe he's Cousins. reproducing. Yeah, maybe he's reproduced. This one was in Provo Canyon. Oh, I saw that one. Oh, yes. So yeah. Provo, Canyon, Provo Canyon, they saw something, and they filmed it, started recording it, and it stood up, and they just took off running. They thought it was a bear kind of rustling around, and then all of a sudden it stands up. And, I mean, you can see the man-like figure stand up, and it they take off. Dude, so I, I've told you guys this many times. You need to watch Expedition Bigfoot. 
It is yes. mind blowing. That's the one the where stuff I, they found. I believe they did a special on Logan Canyon. On no, that show, didn't no, they? they didn't. No, no, they were up they in did Oregon. They did Skinwalkers, didn't they? You said that was Logan Canyon, the Provo Canyon, Provo, or Provo. Provo. Canyon. No, they they there's did. They a, were up in Oregon. There's a Bigfoot show out there that did Logan Canyon. Oh, very, I'm sure there is. Special. So, Finding Bigfoot. That's okay. there it is. There he likes go. bacon. Oh, that yeah. one. Yeah, I was me just off. gonna ask. Yeah. There was like some weird ending to that, right? Yeah. Where he's like so, bacon. Yeah, that one Expedition that one Bigfoot dumb. doesn't have any of that crap. Good. Okay. Oh, good. They're definitely a lot more scientific. It's cool because they go in and they say, okay, where's the concentration of sightings? Around what time period is the concentration of sightings? And then they go to the place where the sightings happen the most at the specific time where it's best for them to possibly find something. Mm. Well, they find all kinds of... And I found out so much about Bigfoot that I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot apparently they make they they make little uh, nests. I knew that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that they'll actually lay down in. They build uh, tree markers, so they'll take trees and make and X's. break them and like. make X's with them and use them as like a mapping system. But they they believe it's a Bigfoot thing because there's no natural way in which those trees can end up in that way. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like they could have just fallen that way. They're legit, like, mm-hmm. thought out and placed in a specific pattern, multiple big, giant, long branches that have, poss- like, broken off from clear over there and they're used over here. Like, it's crazy. And they find a lot of these. Um, but uh, they get into some other other stuff because there, there's this part where they, like, see red eyes and whatnot. But I've seen a lot of weird similarities with things that happen on like Skinwalker Ranch and some kind of alien stuff with Bigfoot. Hmm. Like, like there's, they're using like heat vision and stuff and they'll see something and all of a sudden it'll just like literally just vanish. Just gone. Hmm. Just disappear. Or like they'll, they'll hear stuff and they'll turn around and there'll be like a heat signature on a tree. Like Jeez. something was like up high. Something was leaning on a tree. Oh, frick. And uh, <laughs> some of these people would get these like crazy. The first guy they brought in got this massive like headache. He couldn't like think he, he, he had to be hospitalized and he ended up le- having to leave the show on the first episode. Well, then they go into um, low frequency noises and there's speculation that Bigfoot can emit a super low frequency which can cause like neural damage and like cause headaches and stuff like that. You can't hear it like a dog whistle or something like that, so but it's a lower frequency oh and it can cause issues. And they've actually done research on low frequencies and things that it can cause and, and do and stuff. So all this crazy Gosh. stuff, they found tracks like hmm. it's See, insane. I just, there's um, just too much out there. You know, tree but, knocking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've, the tree knocking. Um, I've heard they'll howl. Kind of, yes. they kind of have yep. like a some type. They sound like a woman a lot of times. They said they'll sound like a like a screaming woman. Like a screaming yeah. woman. Yeah. yeah, to scare people off. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> it's it's honest. It sounds funny, but like when you listen to the audio of it, it's terrifying. Like I don't know. And they do it in the show. They like they get some audio of a Bigfoot that's like allegedly like legit stuff, and they would play it on these speakers and listen, and they would get responses. Ugh. It's, it's nuts, dude. After watching it, honestly, I'm like, frick, dude, Bigfoot's 100% real. I'm not going to lie. I practice my Bigfoot sounds because I thought it's I wanted to go. I'm not going to do it here. <laughs> it's too loud. <laughs> Is that just for you and Jenny? <laughs> Lisa! Whoa! 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 It's because... It's just because... Okay. It's almost 1 a.m. <laughs> for one. <laughs> Two, the last name that was mentioned was Jenny's. <laughs> <laughs> wow you covered your tracks well Cam. you did yes. you did um <laughs> back to that right up. <laughs> one of the coolest findings on bigfoot too so back to josh gates um and i can't remember so he did another show called destination truth and then he does destination unknown so one of those things he did an episode on bigfoot and it was actually one of the other ones over like in asia or something like one of his cousins Anyways, he actually went out. They went overnight, tried to find this thing. Um, they kept hearing weird noises, the knocking on the wood, um, all this stuff. They thought that they got close to one, 
Well, in their um, speculation of going through everything, they actually found fibers of hair attached to a tree. Mm-hmm. Turn, they went and had these fibers of hair tested to see if it would come back to a bear, the DNA, all that stuff, anything. They could not find any matching DNA Mm-mm. to the fibers of hair to link it to any known animal on this earth right now. But it was close to, closer oh. to a human yes. than an animal. Yes. Huh. See, so I either... Just, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, we, you know, talking about aliens, the government has come out and confirmed that there has been things. Like, I just mm-hmm. give so, it a matter of time before they're going to come out and confirm Bigfoot is real. There, there's speculation among Bigfoot peoples. And, and also, again, in this show, they were approached by somebody who was in the Air Force, did trainings in Oregon, and he cla- he's retired, you know, military. He claimed to them that the military knows that Bigfoot exists. We were warned about them as we went on these training exercises. Huh. And then while they're searching for Bigfoot, helicopters kind of came out of nowhere. They're out in the middle of this wilderness. And while they were searching for Bigfoot, helicopters were like circling them as, as they, as the, it was wild, dude. Things were ramping up and all of a sudden like, these helicopters are just appearing like black unmarked helicopters. Just just to kind of keep them out of a certain area. Or? I think, dude, they know the Jeez. government knows. Oh. See, that's I was going to say. Josh, Josh Gates, too, actually, in that same episode, got a casting of a foot as well mm-hmm. of a, you know, on a large foot. Just yep. On a fictional side note, a no, great there's no fictional here. No, a movie. <laughs> It's oh, okay. a, a great Bigfoot movie. Based on facts. <laughs> Goofy movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you back up Harry a bit, Le- Mr. Foot? <laughs> yeah. Harry no. Le- Henderson? It's called Exists. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. oh, it's so good. Oh. So it's one of those um the movie's done entirely through like GoPro and Is different that the one things at the like cam- that. At the cabin? Yeah. Okay. So this group of oh friends, they go to their uncle's oh. cabin in Texas and their uncle, you find out later, their uncle told them never, ever, ever go there. And these two brothers basically stole the keys and take their friends out to this cabin, not telling them that the uncle said never, ever go out there because they think the uncle's crazy because the uncle said, don't go out there. I saw Bigfoot. Don't go out there. Blah, blah, blah. They go anyway. And... um the car ride out there it's at night they end up clipping bigfoot basically and um like without giving away any details royally pissing him off and he slowly like stalks him and stuff it's terrifying it's so good scares the crap out of the guy's riding his bike to try to get away from bigfoot and you see bigfoot like a mile back and he's going forward, and then on his GoPro, he looks back, and all some Bigfoot's like right next to him. Oh. Like the thing is just leaps and bounds, just going. It's good oh, because you like dude, see him, but they don't give you that. they don't give you enough of him. Oh, like the end, you can see him pretty good, but throughout the movie, the suspense, you see him just enough that your mind is mm-hmm. just running with yeah. you. Oh, it's so good, dude! My some of my favorite commercials of all times are the Jack Lee's <laughs> messing <laughs> with <laughs> the Sasquatch. The best freaking commercials. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those ones are really good. Oh man. But yeah, dude. But, I I don't know. Like they they to think they it's been this long, no one's actually ever gotten like like th- more than just the blurry videos we have or some other footage. They I I believe they're either some sort of extraterrestrial life all, and they have government. different abilities. Government's keeping it from us. Um Let's maybe see. they're portaling from place to place through that's the only like i don't know argument that i could see people who are like non-bigfoot believers is like okay if he's so you know if he's been around for so long blah 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 how have we not found any like dead bodies of one and blah 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 and and it's like i get that argument but i still it's just there's too many sightings too much evidence i mean if they really want to be not found like they could definitely work real there's, hard. There's a theory that they eat their dead, and that's why you don't find any dead bodies. There's but too much open you hate land. The bones. <laughs> yeah, or too <laughs> much on <laughs> forest, undiscovered open land that you know. Yeah, yeah. 
There's way but. too much. Oh. Anyways, <gasps> Ding! that is my top ten. That was great. That is my that top was beautiful. 10. I love it. That was fun. I yeah, liked so. it a lot. Huh. Glad you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Although I, a... I would have put uh, the London Hammer farther down. That one baffles me. You mean further up? Well, it was down at the, the bottom. Of down the, the count. Like no, it was shorter number. It was, <laughs> it was at the bottom. We of my list. No numbers. You started at uh, ten and went down to one. That's what I mean. I started at 10 and went to number one, meaning 10 was the lowest and the one was okay, the best. Okay, then up on the list. Okay. We don't know numbers. Basically, less. <laughs> Shouldn't have been at the lowest. Well, I'm the sorry. The last spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> if there are any of these specific topics you'd like us to cover in a full-fledged podcast in the future, please yes. let us know down yes. in the comments. That would be super These are rad. fun ones. Mm-hmm. I love mysteries. Love yes. it. Yes. So... That's it. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, Zach. Great. So we will uh, call it a night from here. Let's go find Bigfoot. Yes. Yeah. Podcast so, in the middle of the woods. One in the morning. Yeah. We're like freaking let's go. out. We hear a noise. <laughs> ah! Base camp. Chris wanted to go night hiking. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Bigfoot shows up. What up, crowd? <laughs> <laughs> We have a guest speaker today. <laughs> so, Mr. Foot. <laughs> Can I call you big? <laughs> we at that level yet? <laughs> oh, well, anyways, you guys have a good night. Thanks for being a part of this crowd. Thanks, we love guys. You all. Love we'll you. Ciao. We'll Bye. See you Bye. Next time. <laughs>